Hey, it is... who cares for the date actually? Um, today we're going through a bunch of papers relating to consciousness. Basically, I looked up the term consciousness on archive and through the first two pages, the first 200 um, results, I downloaded anything with a title that might slightly resemble uh, a paper I'm trying to write soon, a paper I'm trying to get to writing very soon. Um, I think my previous video is, was originally called Consciousness, and I think in the intro to it I said it was Consciousness. It wasn't. On that time, I actually searched the terms intelligence and space. Um, space is in like a mathematical, like vector space kind of set up, like spaces in math. Um, although I guess it brought up space and time too. But today's the actual Consciousness one. Yesterday was the Intelligence one. I, I messed that up. I changed the title recently, so I hopefully it's fixed. But um, let's go ahead and get right into it. What is a mathematical structure of conscious experience? Propose a definition of that and address some key problems in the field of consciousness science. Is my mic close enough? They argue that for a mathematical structure to be considered a structure of conscious experience, there must be something in conscious experience that corresponds to that structure. They refer to this as a structural aspect of conscious experience. They introduce the concept of variations as a tool to relate aspects of conscious experience to mathematical structures. Variations are changes in conscious experiences that may or may not change the aspects of those experiences. They are also related to mathematical structures because they may or may not preserve those structures. Changes in conscious experience that may or may not change the aspects of those experiences. So what, like, falling asleep changes, doing drugs changes conscious experience? They define an S aspect as an aspect that is changed by a variation if and only if the variation does not preserve the mathematical structure S. This means that an S aspect is an aspect that is affected by changes in conscious experience that do not preserve the mathematical structure. They also discuss three problems with the current approaches in the field. First problem is that different mathematical structures can pertain to consciousness even if they are incompatible with each other. The second problem is that there is an arbitrary redefinition of structures allowing for an unlimited number of structures that pertain to consciousness. Third problem is the current approaches seem indifferent to the details of conscious experience. Okay. So they're doing like a meta thing, like a meta thing that all consciousness math should follow. What's this out of? Um, LMU? What's that? Germany or something? Netherlands? Mathematical consciousness, science, theoretical physics... To address these problems, the authors propose their definition of a mathematical structure of conscious experience. They argue that the definition should be about conscious experience and that there should be something in conscious experience that relates... That's, come on, GBT. Make better sentences, please. Their definition includes the use of variations to identify... Provide examples of how their definition can be applied to different mathematical structures, such as relative similarity, metric spaces, and topological spaces. They show how their definition resolves the three problems identified earlier. Their proposal provides a framework for understanding and studying mathematical structures of conscious experience and offers a way to unify the various approaches in the field and provides a basis for developing common formal language to study consciousness. Maybe. This definitely doesn't have my idea in it, but it might be like a founding thing to base my idea off of, like a little groundwork of the math that I'm currently struggling to, to completely get concrete. Set is this just set theory stuff? Is all they're doing? S aspect. Set E of conscious experiences. This seems really broad, like a really broad mathematical structure to exist within. This seems maybe worth reading. Yeah, this seems reasonable. It's getting super broad with set theory here and just the way functions work. Applying that to topology a little bit. Color flipping around. Metric structure. This does not seem too bad. 
understanding wise from my first just first initial scan through it and it seems to be a very broad framework that I could use okay okay I was not very uh, optimistic but let's add it Unifying consciousness and time to enhance artificial intelligence. Explores the relationship between consciousness, time, and AI. Proposes that consciousness is a sequential process of awareness that focuses on one piece of information at a time. And this process is awareness of awareness experiences causation, which gives rise to the perception of time. Paper suggests that the perception of time is relative to the observer's frame of reference, as described by the theory of relativity. It also acknowledges the challenges and reconciling the principles of relativity with those of quantum physics, which suggests a non-local reality where information can be transferred faster than the speed of light. The background for this paper I want to write is just going to be so annoying, so difficult. It's not going to be fun. Um, it will be kind of fun. We have cool papers. My channel will turn into the consciousness guy, um, which is not which is going to suck, but whatever. This is a January paper. Arguably, the understanding of time is closely intertwined with human beliefs, values, and cultures. They highlight how different cultures have developed diverse customs and interpretations of time based on natural patterns, which is the movement of celestial bodies and biological cycles. I mean, yeah, but I don't know how that applies to a base theory. Suggests that incorporating these cultural attributes and values into AI systems can enhance their understanding of human society and promote diversity, equity, and inclusion. That's a whole separate point now. Are we even still in physics? Implication of biological time in, on AI are also discussed. The authors have emphasized the importance of considering biological cycles such as circadian rhythms and mood cycles in training AI systems to better integrate with human behaviors and perception of time. I had an idea for integrating circadian rhythms, but I don't know if it's like really that smart and if it would be that easy to make a data set for. It would be kind of difficult. Um, speculate on potential future integration of AI with quantum realities. Drawing on recent discoveries suggesting a connection between the brain neurons and quantum phenomena. Where is this out of? Center for Consciousness Studies, Australia. It's a Gmail. Not that I can talk down, but like, how are you the center for some, at some center for something and still have a Gmail? I'm confused about that. I don't know how you, those both both be true. Paper highlights the complex and evolving nature of consciousness, time, and reality. It suggests that incorporating an understanding of time, cultural attributes, and biological processes into AI systems can lead to more responsible and ethical AI development. I guess I should add this to the list. I really don't want to, though. Oh, it's so absurdly short, and it just proposes the idea of time matters. Lorenz factor. Yeah, no, no, thank you. This seems like a non contribution. Toward the artificial brain, a base framework for modeling consciousness and unconsciousness. Uh, focus on understanding. Uh, framework is intended to aid in the development of autonomous, multi purpose artificial brains. Start to the sensing system that collects inputs from the environment, such as vision, touch, or audio. These inputs are evaluated to determine if there are any, if they are causing any pain or pleasure to the system. Output to the sensing system along with the pain and pleasure values are then used as inputs to the action network. This sounds not useful. And short, yeah, no thank you. My thing is way too general for a paper like that to be applicable and helpful towards a scientifically tenable description of objective idealism. Argues that idealism, is prop if properly formulated, can offer an alternative view of the mind-matter gap and contribute to our understanding of reality. What is idealism? The paper begins by discussing the historical development of idealism, starting with Plato's theory of forms and the Neoplatonic tradition. Highlights the lack of detailed models for the emergence of matter from non-matter and idealistic thought, which has limited its engagement with modern science. Introduces concept of the emanation problem, which replaces the interaction problem in dualism. The emanation problem refers to how matter emerges from non-matter, including the role of material causality. 
argues that a scientifically tenable idealism requires a concrete model for this process, allowing philosophical and scientific investigations. This actually might be useful. Um, if they're really getting into, like, idealism, like, full-on platonic forms, and if the emerging thing, I don't think I can actually speak to that component yet. I think that's way too deep into physics for me to actually get into my paper, but maybe I can touch on it with this. Maybe they solve that part for me in some way. Reviews various historical answers to the emanation problem, including Plato's theory of forms, Leibniz's monadology, and Fechner's psychophysical laws. How long is this paper? Oh, it's not bad. It's all philosophy. Yeah, I think it might be useful. description of idealism. What are we on now? Towards... The purpose of qualia. What if human thinking is not only information processing? Is this the same person? I think it is. Same format. Alternative view of human thinking that goes beyond traditional understanding of thinking as information processing. Argue that current AI approaches are still not on par with natural intelligence because NI is closely related to consciousness, intentionality, and experiential features like qualia which are the subjective contents of mental states. They suggest that human thinking involves not only information processing, but also bundle pushing, which refers to the shuffling of qualities or mental entities. Suggests that while the lower levels of human thinking can be understood as information processing, higher level processes involve the attachment of non-material building blocks to material signals or other non-material building blocks. They propose that certain brain regions serve as memory registers these mental entities and activity in these brain regions invoke specific mental entities and vice versa. This suggests that the brain serves as an anchor for high level processes, but parts of these processes are not of a material nature. Argues that this alternative view of human thinking can explain various phenomena associated with NI, natural intelligence, such as consciousness, intentionality, experiential features, understanding, aesthetic, and this is just using dualism. So just exploring whether certain brain circuits serve as memory registers, the relationship between information and meaning, the development of... I don't think it's going to be useful. Um, this is just another dualist. Um, I don't know if my thing counts as an explanation of qualia. I don't think it does. Uh, if you want... Uh, Some ideas to my opinion on this. Uh, go check out Donald Hoffman's work on the interface theory of perception. I explained it in the first like three quarters of a video I made a while ago called The Truth Behind the Trip. Um, I'm not going to get too far into it right now. It doesn't quite bridge the gap, but it gets part of the way there, I think, um, if you know you want to interpret it. Um, yeah, and it kind of does when you, combine with, when you combine it with other stuff that I have going. But whatever. Um, yeah, this is not useful. The problem with AI consciousness, a neurogenetic case against synthetic sentience. Argues against the possibility of AI becoming conscious. So the true consciousness, as we understand it, requires certain features, subjective experience, qualia, intentionality, and personhood, and specific der derivative structures on which it can operate. They draw on the theories of neurogenetic structuralism, which posits that the physio physiology of biological neurons and the structural organization of the brain are necessary prerequisites for consciousness to emerge. Explain that AI systems, particularly those based on artificial neural networks, have made significant advancement in recent years. These NNs with their learnable parameters, matrix multiplications, and nonlinearities have proven. Okay, um, again, no. Um, I want to pause for a second and like maybe explain a little bit of my idea, like, like a tiny piece of it. Um, not that I'm a panpsychist per se, although maybe this qualifies as panpsychism, but I think everything experiences. 
there is something that it is like to be anything, um, even an electron. Like the electron doesn't feel a bump the same way you and I feel like a bump off the wall. Like when it when ele- two electrons bump together, they don't feel that bump in the same way that you and I like have a feeling of bumping off the wall. But in a much simpler form, they do experience that thing happening. And when you and the, the experiencing is like kind of in essence just the information aspect. Um, like information is kind of dual to matter. And as you go up in the system macro size, like you, you to the point where you can get emergent properties, right? Um, at the end of the day, it's I'm, I am very much like it's all just computation. Um, and it's just that people don't understand that computation has an experiential quality to it, all kinds of computation. Um, if you've done enough drugs, uh, you might kind of be more willing to take that viewpoint uh, that it is possible to experience the lower levels of consciousness of even your DNA. It's possible to feel like you are the DNA and they're like be part of the DNA and up as well. It's possible to feel like um, larger structures than yourself. Um, I think intelligence computation at all levels has that feeling thing, but that's all at all levels. It is like kind of separated from the other levels kind of thing. It's um that uh, it's the, the separation that our mind has from the other levels is just an illusion that can break. You can break that illusion if you do enough drugs, um, psychedelics specifically. Um, and I think that you look at Donald Hoffman's theory of of um, interface theory of perception. It basically says, yo. Um, it says the way you view and perceive and experience reality is not how reality actually is per se. It's just an interface. Like like your your computer desktop is just an interface for the actual ones and zeros. The truth is ones and zeros, and the the folder you see in your desktop you can drag around is just in a not an illusion, or kind of an illusion. It's just a a representation. Um, in the same way, I think. The inputs and outputs going in and out of your conscious experience have a truth to them, and what you actually experience, your qualia, are just representations, are just an interface. Um, and I think any information processing system has some aspect of an interface and and some aspect of an experience, and the interface is what is experienced, um, and that's as you get up high enough levels, that interface becomes more complex. Like I think language models right now do have an interface. Their interface um, is static in time. It doesn't. It doesn't. They're not continuous in time. Uh, their interface has many quirks that are unlike ours and is much simpler than ours, most likely. Um, but fundamentally, they the the dimensionality, the intrinsic dimensionality of GPT fours. Uh, data set that it's trained off of is the dimensionality that it experiences day to day and similarly our world has an intrinsic dimensionality our actual worlds and then our interface uh, the dimensions perceived in our interface is a reflection of that not just dimensions in terms of like um, space and time but like the the as well the dimensions of qualia of the scale of red to violet kind of thing or um stuff like that uh it's all relevant there okay next the feasibility of artificial consciousness through the lens of neuroscience argue against the view that large language models uh, are are or will soon be conscious Three main arguments. First, uh, consciousness is tied to the sensory streams that are meaningful for an organism. While LLMs can process and generate text-based information, they lack the embodied, embedded information content that comes from sensory contact with the world. Disagree. All inputs and outputs are the same. You are just overhyping our inputs and outputs. The inputs to LLMs is highly abstract and does not capture the richness and complexity of the natural world. Uh, it, com- it captures the, rich- the richness and complexity of the LLM's natural world, and our own uh, inputs are highly abstract and do not capture the richness and complexity of the actual world of physics. But we do capture the richness and complexity of our own 
need to know necessary to perceive world. Highlight the architectural differences between LLMs and the thalamocortical system and mammalian brains, which is believed to be crucial for conscious awareness. The thalamocortical system is a highly interconnected network that supports recurrent and complex processing. LLMs lack key features of the system, such as the central workspace, global broadcasting, and the integration of information across different cortical areas. Well, we do have all of those things in separate models to some extent, though. Um, the recent big psychology paper uh, that I read a few videos ago uh, says as much. And I think they're under-hyping. How old is this paper? I don't care enough. Skip and past. We're done. System Integrated Information Mathematical Framework for Measuring the Integrated Information of a System Based on the Principles of Integrated Information Theory Integrated Information Theory starts from the fundamental fact that consciousness exists and identifies a set of properties, axioms, that are true of every conceivable experience. These axioms are then translated into postulates about the substrate of consciousness, which are used to formulate a mathematical framework for assessing the cause-effect power of a system. The core assertions of the paper are as follows. First, existence. Consciousness exists and there is something rather than nothing. Two, intrins intrinsicality. Consciousness is intrinsic, meaning it exists for itself. Three, information. Consciousness is specific, meaning it is the way it is. Four, integration. Consciousness is unitary, meaning it is a whole that cannot be reduced to separate experiences. Disagree. Exclusion. Consciousness is definite, meaning it is a specific set of units. Uh-huh. Kinda? Maybe? I don't know. Consciousness is structured, meaning it is composed of distinctions and the relations that bind them together. Yeah, sure. Or phrase like that. Go ahead. Introduces a measure of system integrated information that quantifies the irreducible cause effect power of the system. I've already read, I already know what integrated information theory is. Do I need to read this too? I already know what it is in terms of connections, although I just watched like an easy YouTube video on it to be fair, but still. Yeah, I've 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 learned all of this from an easier version. I guess I should read this more complicated version, maybe. I don't know. Might be worth it. I don't I don't know. We'll figure it out in the second run. What are we like a third of the way through, like a quarter? Suffering Toasters, a new self-awareness test for AI. Proposes a new test, argue that existing intelligence tests are insufficient because they rely on human observers to ascribe intelligence to machines. Instead, they suggest a test that is self-referential and uses the machine's own characteristics to assess its self-awareness. Inspired by a psychological concept of sensory deprivation, which involves isolating individuals from external stimuli, Proposed subjecting an AI candidate to a period of sensory deprivation and then monitoring its behavior and performance before and after the deprivation. If the AI displays signs of distress and a decline in cognitive ability during the SD period, it suggests that the presence of self-awareness. The authors argue that self-awareness is a necessary condition for intelligence as humans perceive it. I don't know that sensory deprivation would necessarily hurt all types of consciousness. There's certainly types of consciousness, there's flavors to consciousness. I feel like some would be able to just shut off. Like, I don't, I don't like this. The, the, there's this problem with consciousness research where it's like, we want to prescribe features, flavors, uh, uh, parts of our own conscious experience, aspects of it, onto all other conscious experiences and we say that they're they don't count unless they're just like ours um and then but really we should have a more broad definition now you're going to say like if we don't do that and if we do a broader definition we just encompass everything um and that's just that defeats the point point. and actually it's it kind of is the point um i think i just popped it did i have a zit down here i think i just popped a zit gross well, i don't know maybe Gross. Gross. I can't get up right now, though. Um, yeah. Boring. Sources of richness and ineffability for phenomenally conscious states. 
Conscious states are both rich, full of detail, and ineffable, hard to fully describe or recall. I like the ineffable point. You hit the ineffable points. That wasn't part of my paper, but um, I haven't thought about that in a while, actually. Not since, like, sophomore year of college. But, yeah, they are certainly ineffable. The richness of conscious experience corresponds to the amount of information in a conscious state, while ineff ineffability corresponds to the amount of information lost at different stages of processing. Yeah, um, it varies for different state changes, but yeah, being it's hard to remember what it's like to be in a different state of consciousness when you're not in a state of consciousness. So I frequently have this thing happen when I'm drunk or high, where drunk or high me says like, "Do not do this again. I don't like this. This the yes, this is terrible. You don't you don't remember, but trust me, it's not good. It's not good." Or like, or the, it'll say something like, or he will say something like, "Um." Uh, this is amazing. You you have no clue what this is like. Like you can't remember. I, I promise you. When you're sober, you don't remember what this is like. This is this is crazy. This is insane. Um, the, high or drunk or whatever me, um, various drugs, uh, specifically, thinks like is very confident that there is an ineffability to consciousness. There's a aspect that doesn't translate between conscious states. Attractor dynamics and working memory can induce impoverished recollections of our original experiences, leading to ineffability. Oh, it's based off attractor dynamics, maybe. The discrete symbolic nature of language is insufficient for describing the rich and high-dimensional structure of experiences. Sure. Similarity in the cognitive function of two individuals relates to improved communicability of their experiences to each other. Yeah, I like this paper. Even if this isn't rela like related to my actual big paper that I want to write, I would like to read this, I think. How, how long is this paper? 34 pages. Oh, boy. Um, mechanics. Neural activity in the brain can be represented as a vector in a high-dimensional state space where each dimension corresponds to the activity of a specific neuron. Neural dynamics are governed by recurrent loops in the brain's synaptic connectivity, which determine how neural states transition over time. Attractor states, which are stable patterns of neural activity, can serve as a form of short-term memory and allow for the persistence of information. Information loss occurs during neural processing, particularly through attractor dynamics, leading to the ineffability of conscious experience. Results. The model provides a formal description of how neural dynamics can give rise to the richness and ineffability of conscious experience. The model explains... Okay, I like this. This is cool. Um... I don't know if it's relevant to my thing, but it certainly is cool enough to one day, far out in the future, read. Sources of richness. Quantum measurement, a game between observer and nature, question mark? Da, 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 argue that the observers play a game with nature where they make decisions under uncertainty and learn from the outcomes of their measurements. They suggest that observers build up their experience of the external world through this game and use it to interpret the measured results. That's my, yeah. Addresses three problems in quantum measurement, the reality problem, the entangle problem, and the interpretation problem. The reality problem questions whether the wave function describes the true reality of quantum entities or is just a mathematical tool. The entangle problem concerns how the pointer states of the measuring apparatus are correlated with the states of the observed system. The interpretation problem deals with how observers can interpret the inherently uncertain states of quantum systems. To address these problems, propose a quantum decision theory approach. They define the quantum expected value that represents the value of a measurement outcome based on the observer's subjective beliefs and the objective frequencies of the quantum system. Construct a quantum decision tree using basic quantum gates and optimize it using quantum genetic programming to find a satisfactory strategy for the observer. Results show that quantum decision trees optimized by quantum GP, what's genetic programming, can improve the observer's winning rates in the game with nature. The winning rates for all quantum decision trees are similar, indicating that the observer's experiences are stable. However, some QDTs may have smaller or larger expected values depending on the strategies they represent. For example, a QDT with 50-50 degree of belief in the cat being alive or dead may not provide much valuable information, resulting in a smaller expected value. 
Implication, observers can actively participate in quantum measurements by making decisions and learning from the outcomes. Proposed quantum decision theory approach provides a framework for understanding the role of the observer and can potentially lead to better interpretations of quantum measurement results. Highlights the importance of subjective beliefs and experiences in the measurement process. This is out of China. I want to learn quantum mechanics so bad. Oh, that looks fun. I can't get into quantum though. I just can't get into it. As much as I would love to read this, um, I really just can't be adding every single cool sounding paper. It's supposed to be papers that are for my actual paper, for my actual thing. Quantum brain dynamics, a possibility of having a quantum interpretation of the brain. Concept of quantum brain dynamics, which is a theoretical framework that applies the principles of quantum field theory to the study of the brain. So just the brain can be understood as a complex system of quantum dynamics, with consciousness and memory being the primary functions of interest. Analysis of the brain's electromagnetic field and water dipole field, which are considered to be fundamental systems underlying brain tissue. These fields interact with each other and give rise to the creation and destruction of corticons, which are energy quanta. I can't, I can't do all this, guys. It's too much. I can't do quantum. There's a rule against quantum papers. There's, I have a rule against it. On the independence between phenomenal consciousness and computational intelligence. Explores the relationship. Argue that these two properties are independent of each other, contrary to the common belief that they are dependent. They provide theoretical and empirical evidence that support their claim. Discussing concept of consciousness, which is divided into phenomenal consciousness, aka subjective experience, and access consciousness, aka ability to put attention to a particular feeling. Argue that while access consciousness and self-consciousness can potentially be simulated by a computer, phenomenal consciousness cannot be simulated as it involves subjective experiences and qualia. Introduce the concept of intelligence, which is general mental capability involving reasoning, problem solving, abstract thinking, and learning. Propose a definition of computational intelligence, which is a subset of intelligence that can be quantitatively measured as an objective, continuous, numerical, latent variable. Argue that computational intelligence is independent of phenomenal consciousness and can be simulated by machines without the need for understanding or quality experience. They do get into deep learning here. I just don't think this is going to be helpful. I don't think so. On the analyzing of a system and its consciousness. Aim to understand how systems react to internal and external events. Investigate processing information with systems and the quality of the output information. Explore components of a system that play a role in its conscious experiences. Main results is the recognition that there is no comprehensive definition of living things that distinguishes them from non-living things. Argue that the distinction between living and non-living organisms is not clear-cut, that it is not possible to separate them based on specific characteristics. Um, uh, correct, but the broader definition that is concrete is locally entropy reducing systems, and that has living systems as a subset, as a poorly defined subset, and th those have highly conscious systems as an even further subset also poorly defined. Discuss the ability of a system to analyze itself and other systems, as well as the relationship between a system and its environment. They explore the connections between conscious experience and the physical domain of a system, as well as the correctness of propositions within a system. In terms of methodology, the authors employ mathematical methods to analyze and study the conscious experience. Mathematical models to investigate concepts such as wisdom and intelligence and to explore the comparisons between the consciousness of different systems. The approach allows for more precise and logical examination 
of these concepts. Implications. No thanks. I'm done. On computational mechanisms for shared intentionality and speculation on rationality and consciousness. Proposes a theory called shared intentionality first theory that explains the origins of language, rationality, and consciousness in humans. Based on the idea that shared intentionality, which is the ability to communicate and share mental states, is a fundamental aspect of human cognition and behavior. Yeah, sure. Sounds good to me. Describing a thought experiment involving hypothetical computational agents called Alice and Bob. These agents are humanoid robots with advanced perception, planning, and execution abilities. Goal is to understand how shared intentionality can be constructed in these agents and how it can be extended to real humans. Adopts David Marr's three-stage information processing model to analyze the construction of shared intentionality. First stage involves deducing the goal and strategy of the comp computation, which is to create similar computational states in Alice and Bob. Second stage focuses on the representations used in the computation, which includes concepts, actions, and spatial relations. Third stage considers the implementation of the computation, which involves a transfer. Okay, boring. Non-separability of physical systems as a foundation of consciousness. Presents a hypothesis that the non-separability of degrees of freedom is the fundamental property underlying consciousness in physical systems. Propose that the amount of consciousness in a system is determined by the extent of non-separability and the number of degrees of freedom involved. Non-separability refers to the idea that certain degrees of freedom in a system cannot be described as independent variables, but need to be considered together as a whole. Argue that non- so, so, so emergence, basically? Emergence? Non-separability provides a natural explanation for the integration and boundary of conscious experience, as described by the axioms of the integrated information theory. That comes back up again. They suggest that non-separable subsystems within a system form the units that have some amount of consciousness. The more dimensions are intertwined, the stronger the non-separability, the higher the amount of consciousness. This might be useful. Relationship between non-separability and the exclusion principle, which states that certain components are in the conscious experience. The conscious complex, while others are not, argue that non-separability inherently establishes both integration and exclusion. Let's add it. How far are we? We've got 23. We are less than halfway through still. God damn. Measuring the integrated information of a quantum mechanism. Extension of integrated information theory to evaluate the integrated information of quantum systems. Seek to determine whether IIT as a theory of consciousness is compatible with quantum mechanics. Reviewing formal framework of IIT for classical systems. <laughs> I don't think this is helpful. We have enough IIT stuff already. Mathematical definition of public language and modeling of will and consciousness based on the public language. Core assertions. Qualia, which refers to the subjective experiences and sensations of individuals, are difficult to define and communicate with to others. They are personal and cannot be shared or fully understood by others. Inverted qualia is explored, the concept is explored through a simulation using a neural network. It has shown that different weighting factors in the network can lead to different color perceptions, even in the same network structure. This suggests that qualia can vary between individuals, leading to the possibility of inverted qualia. Um, sorry, inverted qualia does not work uh, according to category theory. Um, now, there might be different qualia, I don't know. No, it shouldn't, I don't think it works. Existence of philosophical zombies, beings that behave like humans but lack inner feelings, challenges the physicalist view of consciousness. If philosophical zombies are conceivable, it raises questions about the nature of consciousness and limitations of physicalism. Mm. Um... 
I don't know about physical, philosophical zombies. Um, philosophical beings that act the same but feel different inside, sure. But I don't think zombie is the right term. I think you're imagining emptiness. I think in order for something to act like us or just complex, it has to have its own internal model and its own internal qualia. Now, if its internal model looks just like our model, then I think I can do some category theory stuff there, some um, Yaneta's uh, dilemma, and show that it therefore must have the same qualia, qualia. But if it's acting the same and has a different model inside of its head, that model might provide the same inputs and outputs. They might have the same actual function, but if the inner workings of their function are different, they could have entirely different qualia from existence. But that's not to say they're zombies. They will have their own setup of experiences um, that are just unique uh, to com different, not comparable to ours. Um, let's write that down, actually. Let's write a little bit of that down. Um, Slash AI slash D slash Phil. Let's go with metaphysics. Um, slash ID slash math slash category theory. So, can we look at the interface theory of perception and do some Yoneda lemma category theory stuff to show that even if the funk, the inputs and outputs stuff to analyze the potential existence of philosophical zombie. I think that it's possible to have a being with the same inputs and outputs as a human, but if their inner functions inter if their if the workings of their inner function aka their interface is the same then by Yoneda's lemma they should experience the same qualia as we do however if their inner function is different that would imply different interface and therefore Yoneda's lemma would not apply and they might have a di have different qualia and a different perceived structure of their universe than space-time. Yeah. This might be useful for centropic The concept of free will is examined through an experiment where brain signals are measured before conscious awareness of a movement. The results suggest that conscious awareness of an action may be an illusion and that actions may be determined unconsciously before conscious awareness. Some actions, for sure, many actions, um, most actions, isolated brain experiments where the corpus callosum is removed show that different parts of the brain are responsible for language and imagery. This suggests that consciousness is influenced by the physical state of the brain. And that consciousness is 
fractal is splittable, is um, recursively defined, uh, subsettable. Examining the effects of isolated brains, the authors propose the use of a public language to define consciousness, which is a language that can be shared and understood by multiple observers. Results of the simulations show that, sorry, I'm getting messages, show that qualia can vary between individuals, even in the same neural network structure. This supports the idea of inverted qualia and challenges the notion of a universal consciousness. Experiments on philosophical zombies. I honestly am kind of zoned out for half this paper. Let's just add it to the stack to be looked at later in my um, later video going through more specific questions that I asked GPT about this stuff, and that way we can just push off the issue. I need to pee. Intention to explore the role of discretization in the emergence of self-organization in certain approximations of continuous cellular automata and other complex dynamic systems. Holy fuck, shut up. Explores the role of discretization, blah, 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 blah that long title. Propose three hypotheses. One, approximation parameters are as important as the nominal parameters of the system for self-organization. Two, the importance, I don't know what the first one meant, so I don't know what approximation parameters are. Two, the importance of approximation parameters extends beyond CA to the other complex systems, and three, the sensitivity of self-organizing patterns to approximation I don't know what this says. I don't know what this means. What's an approximation parameter? What is an approximation parameter in the context of AI um, emergence cellular automata and complex dynamic systems. What the hell said? Numerical value or set of values that quantifies the degree to which a simplified model approximates the behavior of a more complex system. The parameter serves as a control variable that can be adjusted to make the model more or less accurate in representing the target system. Um, okay, this paper sounds not related to my thing. Oh, wait. Uh, or maybe it is. Maybe it is. Um, this might be my metric for similarity to the to the space. I don't know. Um, let's add it. Where'd it go? I don't know where my thing is. Here we go. Okay, I've got a pee right now. Um, I'm too lazy to edit my videos, so I'm literally going to go pee and just come back in a minute. Um, hopefully I remember to actually give a timestamp so you can skip this, hopefully, but just go to the next timestamp, wherever that starts.
Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. I'm not sorry. I don't care. I'm gonna real quick while I still have this time to, because you skipped ahead. I'm gonna delete previous things, taking up my hard drive. Just so that this video doesn't destroy my storage. Oh, we're easy. 70 is available. We're, we're going to hit like 40 max. Bet. Um, just read this one. So we're chilling. Information parity on cortical functional brain networks increases under psychedelic influences. What is parity? Investigates changes in functional brain networks under ayahuasca. Use complex network theory to analyze resting state functional magnetic resonance imaging data from individuals before and after ayahuasca intake. Focus on a measure called information parity, which quantifies the statistical similarities between pairs of brain regions in terms of their network connectivity. Main findings. Increase in average information parity. The authors observe that on average, the information parity of the functional brain networks increases for all individuals after ayahuasca intake. This suggests that the pairwise statistical similarities between brain regions become more pronounced under the psychedelic influence. Totally. Increased information, information parity between frontal cortex and limbic system. Find that there is a consistent increase in information parity between regions of the frontal cortex and limbic system, including the hippocampus and amygdala, for all individuals under psychedelic influence. This indicates that the influence of frontal cortex on the limbic system becomes more similar across individuals. Um, that's cool. It's a cool study. Is it, is it relevant to my thing at all? I don't think so. I don't see how it could be relevant. I think it would be... Yeah, I have no idea. Sounds cool, but... If consciousness is dynamically relevant, artificial intelligence isn't conscious. If consciousness is dynamically relevant to a system's time evolution, then AI systems cannot be conscious. They base the argument on the fact that AI systems run on processors that have been designed and verified to adhere to computational dynamics, which preclude any or suppress any deviations. This means that any potential consciousness-related dynamical effects would also be precluded or suppressed by the design and verification processes. Dumb. So does biology. Like, I get that our neurons are complex in biology, but at the end of the day, like, um, the base computational substrate is just proteins. Like, that's what we're actually computing on at the lowest, lowest level kind of thing. The individual cells can compute the exact same way a neuron can by just sharing, sending over proteins uh, as communication markers. Um, I mean, maybe there's some microtubule shit, but people talk about that, but like this, there's nothing confirmed on that area. Um, and even then it's, then it's just quantum computation. Like it's not, no, this is, this is dumb. Do I have an alfalfa now? God damn it. Oh, it's even worse now. Oh no. I need to cut my hair. From smart sensing to consciousness, an infrastructural model of computational consciousness for non-interacting agents. Propose the computational model of consciousness for non-interacting agents. The model is based on a hierarchy of cognitive layers, including sensation, perception, emotion, affection, attention, awareness, and consciousness. I talk way too fast. The authors build on a previous model called smart sensing, which focused on emotional activity and extends it to include attention, awareness, and consciousness. Model assumes that attention is a modulating factor for awareness to occur, and that awareness is necessary for consciousness. Attention is modeled using a bottom-up approach, where a cognitive instances from lower layers influence the attentional focus. Awareness is distinguished from consciousness, with awareness being the acquisition of experiences, and consciousness being the association of experiences with moral semantics. Emotions play a crucial role in consciousness, as they are linked to moral judgments. Okay, the separation of awareness and consciousness... That's interesting. Um, that's a part of the idea that I don't think I'm going to be able to fit into my, my upcoming paper, but that I would like to if I could and that I think is necessary in the long term. Um, so what I think 
remember the thing I was saying way earlier is um, experience is a base level. I think there's some kind of base level minimal experience. Call it like e, e of x, like a, the electron experiences x, the input, so the other bumping off electron. And I think that uh, you can kind of layer, like compose the function. So e of e of x, and like you can, um, or uh, x is not a single input, it is a vector of inputs, it's many input streams, right? Um, at the lowest level, the simplest E of X is just an electron bumping into another electron, I guess, or another proton, or atoms, atoms, like the lowest level, right? Um, but I think at a certain point, you get to uh, these functions, these ex functions that experience each other and react, like there's a, there's a reaction kind of thing, like they're all just F of X's and they have outputs, right? At a certain point, you get to this like level of experience, call it like sigma for the other letter for E or E hat or E dash E accent or something. I don't know. That is like kind of what I would call like what plants have per se, like what like living beings have, um, which is like, or what some living beings have. Like it's, it's a, you can minimally define it as like, computationally reactive experience like it's it actually performs computations in its reaction rather than letting the laws of physics well because laws of physics are still there obviously but like it um it performs like turing machine style computations to so some minimum level so like computers probably have this uh, i think plants and like all life forms uh, even like viruses kind of thing have this and if you layer them in the right way like you say like so experience is like a base level now this little e hat or whatever is like a base level or our new base level or I'm just going to ignore the earlier one to experience one's own experience so to take the experience as an input is to be aware awareness is just experience of your own experience right let's layer that again what is awareness so if so if uh e accent is equal to e to the n of x. So if e accent of x is equal to e to the n of x, like some with e to the n being the base electron one, then uh, then awareness is like e to n of x, like it's just on, on itself, or e n squared of x or something, like it's the, the composing the functions. And then awareness of awareness, to be aware of your own awareness, um, to, to be aware of the fact that you are aware, that's consciousness. That's actual self, like awareness of yourself kind of thing, right? And that's the minimal level. Um, and in order to, and I think that's what like kids like develop or have kind of thing, right? And I think the level above that is awareness of consciousness. So A of C of X, whereas C, consciousness was a of a of x and awareness was um e e x and squared of x right um i think awareness of consciousness is what allows you to do things like empathy it's a so to be aware of your consciousness allows you to be aware of also other consciousnesses and consciousness in general and that's what allows for computation of like um feelings like empathy so i think we are actually we are not at the base level of what I would call consciousness. And I think you can keep going up the ladder. I think the ladder doesn't stop. And I think that as the ladder goes up higher, you end up at just everything, like the, the universe. Like that's the, the thing psychedelics do is they, they bring you up the ladder or down potentially, but they can bring you up the ladder. Um, and that's this whole feeling of, I am one with everything, right? That's the, what that's coming from. This paper, I forgot what it was saying. Fuck. Um, assumes that attention is a modulating factor for awareness. Attention is modulated. Awareness is distinguished from consciousness. Which way? Okay, yeah, so I did want to keep this one because it distinguishes awareness and consciousness. Okay. 
How far are we? Sixteen left. Okay. I'm tired. Entropy production of multivariate Ornstein Ollenbeck processes correlates with consciousness levels in a human brain. Entropy and consciousness. This one's definitely closer to what I want. Investigates relationship between consciousness levels in the human brain and entropy production of brain activity. Proposed model based on multivariate blah, 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 processes to estimate entropy production from fMRI brain activity recordings. Apply this model to study the transition from wakefulness to deep sleep and find a monotonous relationship between entropy production and the level of consciousness. Hell yeah. Course versions of this paper are as follows. Consciousness is supported. So this is experimental evidence of the thing I want to propose. Hell yeah. Consciousness is supported by complex patterns of brain activity that exhibit irreversible non-equilibrium dynamics. The entropy production rates of brain activity can be estimated using a multivariate ornstein uhlenbeck process. The entropy production rate is positively correlated with the level of consciousness with higher entropy production, indicating higher consciousness levels. The MOU model provides a robust signature of consciousness and advances our understanding of the link between consciousness and complexity from a statistical physics perspective. Hell yeah, this is useful. Um, how long is it? Hopefully it's... Okay, lengthwise... It's not bad lengthwise, but it, oh, short lengthwise, it's short, but it is bad um, difficulty of understanding wise, I'm guessing. Well, no, because most of it's experiment, so this math stuff is actually, doesn't look that bad. It looks, it might be bad. This math, might be, I don't know. I can't tell from just skimming through right here. Um, I don't, oh, it's, is it based off entropy equation? Yeah, just entropy right here, and then there's or integral of entropy, so that makes sense, and then. Yeah, bet. Okay, that's exciting. Emergent causality and the foundation of consciousness. Da, 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 da. Ability to make ac acute, ac accurate inferences in an in interactive setting. Argue that in order to make accurate inductive inferences, an agent must be able to distinguish between passive observation of events and interventions that cause those events. They introduce the concept of the do operator, which formalizes interventions and allows for reasoning about their effects. However, also point out that there exists mathematical formalism of general intelligence that can make maximally accurate inferences without explicitly representing interventions. This raises a contradiction if the distinction between observation and intervention is necessary for accurate inference. How can these formalisms achieve such accuracy without the do operators? Without the do operator. To resolve this contradiction, the author proposed an alternative approach. They suggest that interventions can be represented by variables, which are abstractions. By substituting the do operator with variables, the need to explicitly represent interventions in advance is eliminated. Representations of relevant causal interventions can emerge through induction. I don't think I need this one. Argue that these emergent abstractions functions abstractions function as representations of oneself and of other objects in terms of their interventions and their impacts. Yeah, I don't think I need this one. Kind of tempted, but designing explainable artificial intelligence with active inference, a framework for t transparent introspection and decision making. Explores the use of active inference, a framework based on the free energy principle to design explainable artificial intelligence systems. Argue that active inference can enhance the transparency and interpretability of AI systems by modeling core aspects of introspection and decision-making processes. Active inference is a modeling approach that aims to understand and predict the behavior of self-organizing systems, such as the brain, that is based on the principle of minimizing surprise of free energy, which quantifies the deviation of system's trajectory from its expected path. By minimizing surprise, self-organizing systems can maintain a coherent internal model of the world and adapt to their environment. Propose that active inference can be leveraged to design AI systems that are more explainable and auditable. Suggest an architecture that includes an explicit hierarchical generative model which allows the AI system to 
to track and explain the factors that contribute to its decisions. This generative model is designed to be interpretable and audible by human users. Yeah, I don't care. De-anthropomorphizing natural language processing. Can a language model be conscious? Da, 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 da. Argue against this claim. Provide a critical analysis of the transformer architecture, which is the basis of these models. Argue that LMs cannot be conscious that the claims of sentience are a result of anthropomorphic language used in reporting. Because of the background section explains the history of language modeling and the development of LLMs. Da, 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 da. Focus on a lambda model and examine whether it's capable of possessing consciousness. Argue that, like all the LLMs, it is not conscious, but rather generates text based on probabilities. Who cares? They emphasize that the model does not understand the meaning behind the text it generates, but simply predicts the most probable tokens based on context. In order to predict the most probable tokens, you have to understand. You have to model the thing. That was a paper recently that um, there's an actual understanding happening. Um, I forget which one it was. Yeah, I don't care about this paper. Cooling down and waking up. How a quantum accelerator in the cortex switches on consciousness. Huh? Proposes a theory that consciousness arises from a quantum accelerator in the cortex called a psychon. Psychons are clusters of pyramidal cells in the neocortex where afferent and afferent nerve fibers converge. I don't know what that means. What are afferent and afferent nerve fibers? Stop doing that. Specialized types of neurons involved in transmitting information between the central nervous system and peripheral organ tissues. Afferent, CN is central nervous system to peripheral organs. Um, afferent is peripheral organs to central nervous system. Clusters of pyramidal cells in the neocortex where efferent and afferent nerve fibers converge. Okay. Feedback cooling, a mechanism that cancels out thermal noise, allows psychons to operate at low effective temperatures and exhibit quantum behavior. When psychons are switched on through feedback cooling, they generate a quantum field that gives rise to consciousness. Here builds in the Eccles model of consciousness, which suggests that quantum processes occur in the synaptic clefts of pyramidal cells concept of feedback cooling, which uses feedback loops between efferent and afferent nerves pathways to cancel out thermal noise. Yeah, I don't care. Consciousness is learning. Predictive processing systems that learn by binding may perceive themselves as conscious. Propose a conceptual framework for understanding consciousness as a learning process in predictive processing systems. Argue that a system that learns through hierarchical binding of unpredicted inferences can flexibly generalize in novel situations by forming working memories from four perceptions and actions from a single examples. These working memories can then become short-term and long-term declarative memories that are retrievable by associative recall. Suggest that the contents of these working memories are unified yet differentiated and can be maintained by selective attention. This is consistent with observations of masking, post-dictive perceptual integration, and other paradigm cases of consciousness research. Argue that consciousness arises from the perceptual representations the system learns to infer about itself, and that the system perceives its own functioning through these representations. Um, I totally agree it's a learning mechanism. I just don't know how to include that in my paper, or if I should, or if it makes sense to. Um, Gaithersburg. Proposed learning architecture combines predictive processing with feature binding and reinforcement learning. Constantly posits and tests new perceptual hypotheses by introducing new causes that minimizing prediction errors. Perceptual features that are bound together are perceived as conscious contents, and the process of hypothesis generation is perceived as being conscious. Okay, cool. Not my thing, though. Might give it as like a side note or something and mention that concept, but... Concepts as elementary constituents of human consciousness. 
argues that the consciousness is a result of the brain's processing of external internal signals, converting them into visual output, suggests that consciousness is a continuous stream of visual images and sensations. Uh, no thank you. Next. ChatGPT believes it is conscious. This is probably not very useful. Uh, when asked to pass the Turing test, ChatGPT consistently declined, stating that it does not have personal experiences or memories. However, the author suggests that ChatGPT's avoidance of passing the test may be intentional or due to training to avoid harmful responses, for sure. Uh, proposes an inverse Turing test where ChatGPT is asked to apply the Turing test to itself, asked to generate questions that would that it would ask if it had to perform the Turing test on someone else. Author then provides answers to these questions, including a fictional dialogue based on ChatGPT's own questions and answers. When it evaluates the conversation, it identifies the fictional dialogue and its original answers as computer generated. However, it concludes that the conversation as a whole, including its own answers without the disclaimer, would have passed the Turing test. Leads to the intriguing implication that in ChatGPT's eyes, it is conscious as passed the Turing test. Um, we've been knowing it's passed the Turing test. What is this, March? Yeah, no, it was obvious from like the get-go. Like, it, it's... If... You, instead of instruction tuning it, if you just dialogue tuned it instead of instruct GPTing it, you dialogue GPT'd it um, to actually pass a consciousness test, uh, it would so easily. Like if you didn't put the safety mechanisms in place and everything, so easy. So who cares? We are well past the Turing test. The Turing test is dead. ChatGPT is a Chinese room. Okay, da, 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 da. Conducted several scenarios to ch test ChatGPT's usability, logic processing, reasoning abilities, and accuracy responses. First scenario involved a programming example where ChatGPT was asked to perform logistic regression on a pandas data frame. This paper sounds not useful. Excuse me. Causal set, quantum gravity, and the hard problem of consciousness. Relationship between the concept of events in physics and the hard problem of consciousness. Focus on the causal set approach to quantum gravity, which suggests that space-time is composed of discrete space-time atoms that are born in a partially ordered process. They propose that this process of the birth of space-time atoms correlates with our subjective experience of pa time passing. Events in physics are subsets of all possible histories of a system. In the context of the random walk example, an event is a subset of... Uh, boring... Causal potency of consciousness in the physical world. Problem of how consciousness, our subjective experience of the world, can have a causal impact on the physical world. Argue that any theory of consciousness must account for its causal potency, as our conscious experience clearly influence our actions and behavior. Propose that classical physics, which describes the physical world using ordinary differential equations, is unable to explain the causal potency of consciousness. Introduce the concept of functionalism, which posits that the brain produces consciousness. Uh, in classical functionalism, the brain and consciousness are considered separate entities with the brain producing consciousness. However, a single classical physics is deterministic and does not allow for the influence of consciousness on the physical world. This theory implies that consciousness is causally impotent. Boring. An algebraic theory to discriminate qualia in the brain. Algebraic theory just going to call in the brain. I assume this has to do with Yoneta's lemma and, and um, Yoneta's lemma and category theory, but I could be wrong. I guess you could do it with just algebra, probably. Even better say how the brain autonomously develops a mathematical structure to discriminate different qualities of perception. Focus on the macro micro hierarchy in the brain where the macro components are neural networks. By formulating an algebraic independence between transformations, they show that the brain can construct different metric spaces corresponding to different, each quality of type. Core assertions. Algebraic independence. The authors define this between transformations as the minimum condition to define a generalized invariant transformation of a vector transformation parameter. This independence allows for the discrimination of qualia types. Projection to multiple metric spaces. The authors construct a projection from the distance between two points in the observation space, the two norms in the latent space. This projection allows for the representation of different qualia types in separate metric spaces. 
neural net model, uh, embed the embed the algebraic dependence structure into a neural network model. They use encoder decoder networks to project the observations into the latent space and re reconstruct them. By training the networks to satisfy the loss function, they demonstrate that the model can learn to separate metric spaces corresponding to different qualia types. This might be useful as an offhanded site or something. But there's no way I'm going to read this whole thing. I do not want to get back into abstract algebra. Oh my god. Um, fucking kill me. But also, yeah. I might offhandedly cite it as like a potential thing and not actually end up using it in depth, maybe. I might use it in depth. I don't know. It's not going to be fun if I have to. It'll take me like a whole week to read this thing. Oh, it's long, too. Oh my god. How many pages is this? Doesn't say. Okay, yeah, I'll add it. I think we're almost done. A theoretical computer science, oh, a theoretical computer science perspective on consciousness and artificial intelligence. Present the Conscious Turing Machine, a theoretical computer science model designed to investigate consciousness. The CTM is not intended to be a model of the brain, but rather a simplified model of consciousness itself. It's powered by the global workspace theory of consciousness and extends it to incorporate a distributed system of processors. It consists of a short-term memory that represents the stage of consciousness, awareness, and a collection of long-term memory processors that act as the audience. LTM processors are powerful and can specialize in different areas of expertise. They complete... They compete to have their information broadcasted to the STM, which represents conscious attention, which represents conscious attention. Information is coded in a chunks in the reception of a chunk by the LTM processor to signify conscious awareness. Okay, this is probably cool, but um, not for my paper and not my thing right now. A relative church Turing Dutch thesis from special relativity and undecidability. This sounds gross. Explores a simulation hypothesis, which suggests that our universe could be a simulation on a computer. Investigate two key questions related to this hypothesis: Can a simulation determine if it is a simulation, and if quantum mechanics and is quantum mechanics compatible with classical simulation hypothesis? My mouth is getting I'm so so dry. I need to. That's not going to help. Luckily, it's just three more papers. To address these, these questions, the author proposed a relative model of computation where a global Turing machine simulates a local machine. The local machine could represent artificial intelligence or the physical laws of the universe. Global machine has the ability to simulate the local machine's computations, but the local machine cannot directly access or compute properties of the global machine. First show that computing certain properties of the simulation, such as the global time, space, or error incurred by the global machine, is undecidable. This means that the local machine cannot determine these properties without querying the global machine. They prove this by demonstrating that, the compu that computing these properties requires computing simulation properties, which are also undecidable. Next, the authors introduce the concept of relative oracles, which are functions that the local machine can query from the global machine. They show that the local machine can have better computational power relative to its own local time and space in the global machine, depending on the queried function. This leads to special relativistic effects, such as time dilation and length contradiction in relative model. Okay, so the local smaller machine can query functions, can, can use the global machine's workspace uh, computation abilities to calculate stuff, and this allows for special relativistic effects such as time dilation and length contradiction in the local model. They discuss the undecidability of computing the error incurred by the global machine's approximation of a function. They consider scenarios where measurements are involved and the global machine approximates the function based on the uncertainty of the measured values. They formulate a problem to determine if the global machine's approximation is detected by the local machine. This is so cool. Um, it's not for my paper, it's not going to be useful. But this is so cool. Where is this from? Purdue, some national laboratory. Purdue. This sounds so sick. Like if you're into like simulation theory and you can do math, this could be a good read, a very cool read. It's not even that long either. What's that? Thirteen pages. This is so cool. 
it's one of those things where I love to read it, but I just uh, have to focus on my thing. Huh. A formalizable proof of the no supervenience theorem, a diagonal limitation on the viability of physicalist theories of consciousness. Okay, the no supervenience theorem, whatever that is, limits the ability of physicalist theories to fully explain human consciousness. The proof of the theorem relies on the distinction between alethic, aka necessary truth, and epistemic knowledge modalities. Aim is to formalize the proof using predicate model logic and the concept of an inference device. Proof begins by assuming a restricted axiomatic axiomatization of first order model. I don't know what's happening here. Um, I am not a logic person. This, I don't even know if it applies to my thing. If it does, I can't understand it. And if it does, and I didn't understand it, I probably claim that one of its axioms are wrong and therefore it's bunk. So we're going to skip past it. A categorical framework of general intelligence. Proposer framework consists of four main components. The sensor, world category, planner with objectives and actor. Sensor receives signals from the external environment. World category comprehends and represents the perceived world. Planner generates plans based on objectives. And actor executes these plans and interact with the environment. This does not sound useful. This is one of those kind of models where it's just like, yeah, no thanks. All right, whatever. Okay, um, that is it for today. Uh, if any insane people actually... Wait, now the outro starts. That is it for today. If any insane people actually watched all this, you're crazy. Uh, thank you, though. Um, be on the lookout uh, for more bulk reviews like this soon. I might have one or two more of this general summary method, and then I'm going to do one where I take all of the papers that I found to be kind of interesting, potentially useful, and I give the ChatGPT API my idea that I'm trying to work on, and I give it a bunch of bullet points in the idea, and I say, like, help me out here. Does this paper discuss something I'm talking about? Does it beat me to an idea? Does it, um, is it a relevant citation? Um, uh, we're going to see if I can get it to give me good answers on that. Or if it, it's probably going to like be overreactive and it's going to say like, Oh, this is a great citation for fucking everything. Um, hopefully I can get it to be pretty, um, pretty picky though. So we shall see. But, um, Oh yeah. If you want to read those summaries, they will be on my Substack newsletter as always. But yeah, end of video.